Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the new second generation Google Nexus 7. So this is also made by ASUS, just like the first generation, and this is also priced pretty low. However, they've bumped up the price to $229 from $199, but that's because they've added a lot of new features and improved the specs considerably. The big story here is that display, which is a full 1080p display that gives us a resolution of 1920 by 1200. So that's 323 PPI, that's the highest resolution tablet display you can buy right now. So that bests the iPad's Retina display, which has a pixel density of 264, or the even the Nexus 10, and certainly much better than the iPad mini, which is less than 200 PPI. I think it's 170, somewhere around there. So it's pretty low by comparison. Now we also get a five megapixel rear fine camera. The original did not have any camera on the back. It just had the uh, forward facing camera for tele teleconferencing. It's available in two capacities, 16 or 32 gig, 229 for 16 and uh, 269 for 32 as I have here. So this is the bigger one. Now in terms of specs, we have a 1.5 gigahertz quad core Snapdragon S4 Pro processor. We have two gigs of RAM. That's better than the one gig we had before. And we also have an Adreno 320 GPU, which runs at about 400 megahertz. Other features in here include NFC as well as wireless charging that supports the wireless Qi standard. So you can use a wireless charger to charge this. Otherwise it uses USB. All right, so we can see our Google branding down here, and we should have a little tab somewhere back here to cut. So let's go and slice that. All right, so let's just lift the lid here. And there is our Nexus 7. So we have a little tab here to lift up. And we're gonna set that aside for just a minute while we take a look at the package contents. So in here we'll find our wall adapter, our wall wart. So this will charge via USB, or, an, or as I said, uh, the Qi wireless standard. We also have some literature here, Nexus 7 in several languages, English. And let's see what else we got. We got a little quick start guide that looks like here. So it just tells you about some of the features here, including NFC, the USB port, the volume rocker, power switch. So there we go. We also have our micro USB charging cable. And that's about all. So let's go ahead and get to the tablet here. As you can see, wrapped in plastic. On the back here, it's much thinner, much lighter. That's the first thing that stands out as soon as you hold this if you're used to using the original Nexus 7. Let's just peel off this tab. You can also see it's got a uh, smoother finish to it. It's still got a rubbery texture to it, so it's nice and grippy. It's actually kind of similar to, I guess it's kind of similar to something like a uh, Kindle Fire. All right, so let's go ahead and take a close look at the design. The first thing that jumps out to me is just how thin and lightweight it is. You can see it's tapered at the edges, which adds to the feel of the thinness of the device, kind of creates a further sense of thinness. So it feels very nice and comfortable in the hands. It's got this nice grippable texture to it. Doesn't seem to be too much of a fingerprint magnet. We've seen materials like this used on uh, or a texture like this used on things like the Amazon Kindle, which were fingerprint magnets. Uh, back here you see your camera, 5 megapixel autofocusing, so a higher quality camera. Again, also records video, it's uh, 1080p, so full 1080p. We have one of our speaker grills up here, another one down here by the uh, USB jack. You can see it's actually split up here. Our Asus branding. Along the right side, you'll see your sleep wake power button, as well as the volume rocker and microphone. At the top, you'll find your headphone jack. And that's it along the side. Now along the front, just a blank piece of glass. Again, Gorilla 3, so it's nice and scratch resistant, pretty durable. Now if you look up here, you'll see we have our 1.2 megapixel front facing camera just above the display. We also have, if you look, there we go, you can see it right there, there's an ambient light sensor. So we'll automatically adjust the screen brightness to the ambient conditions. Now like all Nexus devices, we also have a notification LED light toward the bottom of the display. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this design. And as you can see, it's much thinner. It's also much lighter. It's also much narrower than the uh, original Nexus 7. So if we put this on top here, you'll see it. See how much more it sticks out. Let's look a little closer here. So you can see here, they've shaved down the bezel along the edges and it looks to be about the same height or maybe, yeah, it's actually, it actually feels a little t longer. It actually feels a little taller than the old Nexus 7. So if we look here, yep, it's a little taller, but much thinner as you can see if you look along the edge. Now missing here, as you can see on the Nexus 7, are these electrical contact points which worked with accessories. We don't have any of those uh, on the uh, new Nexus 7. Now the other big difference here is just the materials they're using. They're still using this sort of textured rubbery material which makes it a very nice grippable material. Also makes it fairly durable and scratch resistant. 
and maybe impact resistant as well, which makes it a little easier to use or live with without a case. So that's kind of nice. Kind of has a case built right in. You can see that sort of golf ball texture is gone here. Just nice smooth. And you can also see that the Nexus logo is in landscape versus the portrait orientation here. So they pretty much intend this to be used in landscape orientation, which probably goes along with the fact that they have reduced the size of the bezels, which makes this less of a comfortable portrait tablet, uh, but a more comfortable uh, landscape tablet. Now the layout of the buttons are the same, so you can still see our sleep wake button, volume rocker. We have our microphone position here below the volume rocker, it used to be positioned up here. We also have a relocation of our headphone jack, it's now at the top of the device. It used to be toward the bottom here on the original Nexus 7. Now you can also see they've simplified the construction here. So we have a unibody plastic design versus this sort of plastic bezel with this rubber back panel. So this used to be, you can pop this off. It wasn't really meant to be removed, but you could pop this off. Probably not the same case with the new design. All right, so I'm just gonna tap and hold that power button up here to get it started. So we see our familiar splash screen. This is familiar to Jelly Bean. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our basic user interface. So if we swipe down here, we can go to our settings and check out the latest version. So we go to About Tablet, we'll see Android version 4.3. Double tap on that, you get that little Easter egg we're pretty familiar with now. So let's go back to the lock screen. We do have a few features here, which are again carried over from Android 4.2, such as lock screen widgets. So if you swipe on the lock screen, you can go ahead and add another widget. Uh, let's go ahead and add my Gmail widget. And we can select which inbox we want to display here. So let's go to primary inbox. There we go. So if we go to our lock screen now, uh, we can swipe uh, without unlocking the device and checking out and check out our email. You can also tap on this to jump right to that app. We can also add additional ones here. We can add Google Now, Google Keep, Google Posts, that sort of thing. So we have a few things we can add. Now let's go ahead and unlock this and take a look at the basic user interface. So you can see we have several home screens here. You can also see the default wallpaper. Uh, My Library is basically a widget that displays all your Google content, such as your books, your TV shows, movies, that sort of thing, including your magazine subscription. So you can tap on any one of these to jump right to them. So it takes you to Google Play magazines and that sort of thing. You can also remove these widgets if you don't want them. Just tap and hold on them and remove them. Uh, you can see we have a folder full of Google apps, including Google Keep by default, Calendar, Play magazines, Play movies, Play books, Play music, Currents, the Gallery app, and our People's app, which is our address book. We also have the Google Play store as well, where you can purchase new content. Uh, if we go to... Uh, our dock here, or our lower third, we can see Google Chrome, the default web browser, YouTube, as well as Maps, uh, Gmail. We have Google Hangouts and the camera app. Go here to get to more of your apps. This is the app drawer. Uh, so we can take any of these apps from the app drawer and stick them on the home screen. So, for example, we see our new gaming app, which is an Android 4.3 feature here. So Play Games is basically a game store app. Uh, here it takes you right to the game store where you can purchase apps and also sync all of your scores and that sort of thing right to your apps. This works with your uh, Google account. So it's kind of similar to uh, Apple's implementation which is called Game Center. Now because this is a Nexus tablet we do have our on-screen Android control so it does take up some of the screen real estate and it does move either in portrait or landscape. So there you go. Uh, so those buttons do move around. I actually prefer that. Uh, I actually like the on-screen buttons, but I don't like the fact that they take up some of the screen real estate. But here we go. You can see we have our recent apps button, which allows you to see all of your recent apps and launch them just by tapping on them. Or you can swipe them out of the way, just like that, get you to close them. Take you home. If you tap home and swipe up, we'll take you to Google Now, which is your search and sort of uh, e personal assistant. Uh, so you can do things like... What's the weather like tomorrow in Detroit? Tomorrow's forecast for Detroit is 79 degrees with a thunderstorm. Launch the YouTube app. Show me pictures of the Ford Mustang. Now toward the top you'll see your notification badges on the left and on the right you'll see your time, battery status, and wireless. Now if you swipe on the right you get your quick access toggles including settings. Uh, you see brightness, you see your count, time capsule, auto rotate, battery percentage, Bluetooth off and on. So you can switch Bluetooth off and on and airplane mode. If you go to the settings here it takes you right to the settings panel. Let's swipe down here. You can also jump quickly to your brightness controls. You see you have auto brightness and you can also manually adjust them. 
Now on our left, we get our notification panel, so we can see my emails, and you can expand them using that two-finger gesture or the single-finger gesture. So if we close them, we can also open them with one finger. Again, that's an Android 4.2 feature. Uh, we have our notifications from Google+, Plus, our updates, and we see our Google Now notifications as well, including our weather. Now this works in landscape or portrait orientation, so there we go. We can see our apps move this to the sort of column view versus the lower third view. Uh, so everything reorganizes automatically in landscape or portrait. This also works on the lock screen again, so if you rotate to landscape, everything does orientate that way, and you can also use that uh, sort of carousel view in landscape mode to uh, select your widget. Now, unfortunately, you cannot launch the camera from the lock screen like you can with a phone. So even though we have a rear-facing camera now, we still don't have that capability. Now, for the first time, we have a rear-firing camera. Again, 5 megapixels capable of recording video 1080p at 30 frames per second. So a pretty decent camera. Certainly not a high-end 8 megapixel or 10 megapixel or 13 megapixel camera like we're used to on higher-end smartphones, but certainly better than no camera at all. Uh, so they've done a pretty good job here. Uh, and as you can see, it has all the focusing. It automatically adjusts. You can see those little green indicators. Uh, automatically focus. It basically tells you when it's in focus. If it can't focus on the subject, you'll see red. So there you go. Works pretty well. Just tap anywhere on the screen and you can take your photo. And you can also switch between video and photo mode. You can also see we have photosphere and panorama mode. Again, a feature we're pretty familiar with. The uh, photosphere mode has been enhanced this time, so they've improved the algorithm for knitting all the images together. Now you can access your settings in two ways. You can go up here to this little circle, or bring up the settings toward the center of the screen, and you can tap on them and quickly access them. But you can also just tap and hold your finger anywhere on the screen to access them. Now this is a redesign from Android 4.3, so instead of a circle, you now get this sort of half moon shape. But on the top of the settings, you can see we have our exposure values. And if you hold on that, you can see you can get quick access to your exposure, and you can see it automatically adjusts the scene for you. You can also tap and hold to switch the camera, so you can go to your front camera or rear camera, and you can also go to your settings, and as you can see, it drills down for you, so you can toggle on your GPS location in the photo. You can change a, you can set a countdown timer, so if you release it, it takes you to the countdown timer, and you can set the duration. We go back here, go up to settings. We can also change the picture size. So if we go to picture size, you can see the 5 megapixel maximum size. You can also go all the way down to VGA or QVGA. Uh, you can also go to your white balance. So if we go here, white balance, and you can see we can change it to auto, fluorescent, incandescent, cloudy, sunny. We also have scene mode. So scene mode, we have action shots, night shots, none. Uh, we have sunset as well as party mode. So there you go, lots of uh, optimization for certain types of scenes. Now the big story here is the display quality. The sharpness of the display is definitely its standout feature. So everything you look at, no matter how small the text is, it's very sharp. It makes this an ideal reading tablet because text doesn't fatigue your eyes because it's not pixelated. You don't have to uh, squint to see it. You don't have to pinch in and out to see it. It's all very sharp looking. So definitely an excellent reading tablet. And it has that nice, smaller, one-handable form factor. So you can see it fits in one hand, even fits in some pockets if you have pretty big pockets. Uh, so definitely an ideal reading tablet with at this resolution. And the quality of the images and the graphics look superb. High, high contrast, uh, bright, vivid colors. Uh, very bright display, much brighter than the outgoing Nexus 7, which I always criticize for having a dim display. It has nice off-axis viewing angles. You can see it's a little gloss, a little, it was quite a bit of glare with this panel, but that's kind of normal. Uh, so it'd be nice if it had a little more anti-glare properties here. But otherwise, a superb display and definitely the highlight feature of the Nexus 7 second gen. So like a lot of tablets we're seeing these days, audio is very important. So we have dual stereo speakers, and they're in landscape orientation. So again, if you're using this in landscape orientation and watching a movie, this is an ideal setup. Unfortunately, when you're holding it on the left-hand and right-hand side, you have a tendency to muffle it a bit, but it's pretty hard to muffle the size of these speakers. Uh, so definitely excellent audio, big improvement, pretty loud, good depth of range. Not as, the bass isn't as deep as I'd like to hear, but you can definitely feel it. Uh, uh, in the tablet. You can feel it's really vibrating in the tablet. So definitely a big improvement over the uh, kind of tinny sounding speaker we're used to with the old Nexus 7. Now we also have simulated surround sound thanks to Fraunhofer processing. So it's able to create the illusion of surround sound using just these two speakers. And the effect is definitely impressive. You do get pretty good audio from this. 
Now in terms of our synthetic benchmarks, we score about 20,000 on the second gen Nexus 7. That's a big improvement over the 12,000 on the first gen, which in itself was very respectable at the time when it launched. This was also using a quad core processor, but a Tegra 3 clocked at 1.3 gigahertz. This is a Snapdragon S4 Pro clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. So big improvements there. This is also pretty respectable when you consider things like the high-end Galaxy S4 scores about 26,000 on this test. Now other devices in this price range include the Tab 3 7 inch which scored a pretty measly 7,000 in the same test. So this is a huge improvement over something like that and only costs $30 more than the Tab 3 7 inch. Now something new with Android 4.3 is restricted profile. So if we go to settings, go to users and go to add uh, a user or profile you can now have the option to add a restricted profile. So this is kind of like the kid mode. Basically this allows you to select which apps are available to this user. So if I tap on the user I can name it. So let's say, I don't know, Zoe. So that's my dog. It's one of my dogs. Click OK. And now I can access or I can select which apps I want accessible to that account. So for example, I can enable the calculator. I can enable the camera. I can enable the browser. Google Currents. Google Drive, Google Earth. Email is not available in restricted mode, so email will not be accessible. Same with Gmail. So you can't turn on Gmail. Google Plus you can turn on, which enables Google Plus Messenger. Keep, Maps, and that's it. All right, so let's go ahead, set that. So now if we go to our lock screen, you can see we have these two profiles here. So you can see my profile, which is now protected behind the passcode. You have to in order to have multiple profiles. And then you have the guest or restricted profile. So that is Zoe. You can see it also puts your name down there. You can also add a photograph if you want. It changes your uh, wallpaper. It also changes the screen brightness to whatever you last set it. You unlock the device and you can see only the apps we selected now appear here. And if you go to the Google Play Store, you can see we do not have access to the Google Play Store. So uh, for example, if you give this to your kids, they won't run off and start buying everything under the, under the Google Play Store on your account. Now the Nexus 7 also supports wireless charging using the Wireless Qi standard, and in fact Google sells one for the Nexus 4, which also works with the Nexus 7. So all I have to do is place it on the charger, you get a little tone indicating it's charging, and you'll see your charging status. Now the biggest competitor to the Nexus 7 is the iPad Mini. Just to show you the size difference here, so you can see a 7.9 inch screen versus a 7 inch screen. This is a 4 by 3 aspect ratio versus 16 by 10. So in reality we actually have a much larger display on the iPad Mini than the Nexus 7. This is about 40% bigger than the Nexus 7. So you get a lot more screen real estate versus the Nexus 7. But you get a much lower resolution display unfortunately with the iPad Mini. So you get a pixel density of 163 versus 300 123, which is noticeable. This is not as sharp as something like the Nexus 7 or the Retina display on the full-size iPad. Now in conclusion, I'm very impressed by the Nexus 7. I think this is clearly the best 7-inch tablet you can buy right now, even if you don't look at the pricing, which is really competitive at 229 It's a bargain in terms of what you get inside this tablet. So once again, you get that high-resolution display, the highest pixel count you can get on any tablet right now is in this tablet, and you get impressive internal specs with that quad-core 1.5 gigahertz Snapdragon S4 Pro processor. You get 2 gigs of RAM. You get a fairly decent 5-megapixel autofocus camera with 1080 video you get stereo speakers which is a nice feature as well so you get good sta good sound with surround sound processing so a great media tablet all around it's also very thin and lightweight with a nice grippable material on the back uh, which is not a fingerprint magnet surprisingly a lot of time these uh, sort of matte textures tend to attract a lot of fingerprints uh, but they've really managed to uh, solve that problem with this material it's also pretty durable so you don't have to worry about scratching this material it's kind of more um, I guess more life proof. Uh, so definitely pretty impressed overall with the design features and quality as well as that display. Definitely the display is the big story here. It's very sharp. It's perfect for reading text and the form factor is perfect as an e-reader. So again it fits in your palm pretty comfortably and is very lightweight. So definitely a big fan of the Nexus 7. This is clearly my top pick for the 7 inch tablet market. So that's going to do for me guys in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again in the next one.